please be advised there are spoilers ahead related to the property being watched and or discussed. Hello! Thank you so very much for tuning in. This is Asha Media TV. My name is Asha. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is where I like to watch, react, and just give my two cents about a couple of properties related to sci-fi and fantasy. So, in today's video, I'm going to be clicking play on episode 3 titled The Ghost Network. From the first season of Fringe. I'm really digging this show so far. Yes, I am. Now, before I share with you a condensed version of my reaction to this episode, I want to just give you somewhat of an informal recap as to what I've understood in episode two so that you have an idea of what my train of thought is before I press play on episode three. Okay, so in episode two, it was quite an episode where we start off with this woman who suddenly gets impregnated and her pregnancy goes from like A to Z in like, what, barely an hour or so? And her child rapidly ages <laughs> to 80 years old within the shortest time ever and dies. So we find out that there's some fringe signs behind all that and Walter, Peter, and Olivia, the trio, they figure things out and it ends up being related to a serial killer that Olivia was chasing back in the past, who I then find out is actually some kind of clone, it seems because they end off the episode showing other versions of that particular actor. That's what I think I've seen. Mind you, I haven't been corrected whether that's right or wrong at this point that I'm recording this reaction. So, yeah. In a nutshell, massive dynamic. <laughs> We're doing all kinds of science. And it seems as if every episode is going to be exposing an aspect of fringe science that I'm just so excited to watch. Um, they've hinted at reanimation. And in episode two... They've definitely elaborated on the technology to rapidly age someone and also by eating pituitary glands, de-age someone or prevent the process of aging. That's as far as I can say that I understand thus far, hence the disclaimer on the screen for you to read through, <laughs> okay, before watching my reaction to this episode. The comment box below is open to anyone that wants to educate me on the fringe science related to each episode. So feel free to give me the 411 of whatever I need to know without spoilers, of course. But without further ado then, here is my condensed reaction to episode 3 of the first season of Fringe. Hello! Are you ready to watch episode 3 with me? Let's go, people! Count down to play. 3, 2, 1... I like cathedrals. I think they're fascinating. Your new father for us, it's been three months since I came back. Go on. He's a good man. But I... I see things. It's quite jarring. I'll say he's psychic. That's what I'm getting so far. And then he thinks it's sinful to see things ahead of time. I'm scared. Scared of what? Of what's going to happen on the books. All right, so it's the latter of what I just said. Okay. Yeah, if I saw somebody put that on. Okay, they're showing it realistically. Oh my god! Oh my goodness. I just wanted to stop. Son, have you hurt someone? No, but this guy has. Roy can draw. So he has he gets premonitions. Okay. That's the mystery here. What did these oh what did that guy do to them? Oh are they frozen? <laughs> okay. Oh 
Okay. I'm excited to see what new technology this is. So how do you freeze people on the bus? This is how. Oh, back to John Scott. Okay. But he's alive, though. But they are in peace. I'm just wondering if he's going to show up, at, you know, and be like, Olivia, I'm alive. Because of massive dynamic. Who's that lady? She's got daggers for uh, Olivia. I'm unsure if that's a friendly expression or not. <laughs> this is mom. Well, you be here, Libby. You do the rest now. Yeah, the man betrays his country, turning on the state secrets to God knows who, and here we are pretending he's a hero. No, stop. I think she's also bitter. Not bitter, sorry. Just uh, disappointed in herself that she trusted him. And he told me he loved me. I wasn't going to tell you this. But he said he loved me too. <laughs> That's a nice way to put the humor in. <laughs> Why she really means it? He had an affair with both of them. I kind of hope so, just just for the hell of it being kind of wacky in that sense. Hmm, possibly realistic. Is he putting sugar in it? You brought your own sweetener? Something ridiculous. My medication. Ah. You're not on any medication, Walter. Of course I am. Making it myself in the lab. Ooh. Oh, I wish you were joking. <laughs> it's not. Whatever works, you know? Hey, Whoa. what are you doing? Thought I didn't see you all day? Ah. It's being followed. You were supposed to check in before you came home. Did you tell anybody else that I'm here? You're the first one of the bunch I'm gonna come out. I knew it! Well, they made that quite obvious that his shady past would kind of follow him into this stuff. Let's dive on the pancakes. Blueberry. That's great, Walter. Did somebody call me on the phone? Oh, uh, that's what was important. Something about a bus. The call in the CDC confirmed the attack isn't biological in nature. There's no contagion. Mm. You said there wasn't any good news. <laughs> so no one can enter the bus? Is it like... Because it seemed like as if there was some kind of jelly. Yeah. Whoever did this wanted attention. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Oh, it's not an attack at all. It's something else in time. Meaning what? Well, I knew that you wouldn't be there. I, I imagine mm. that the material was released in gaseous form before purification. We'll have to dig out the personal effects so we can ID them. Notify their next of kin. Oh my gosh, can you imagine it's like, okay, moving the jelly and then moving the people out of it? Is that even safe? What's this? Okay, these guys again? remember where they got that bag from I'm terrible people sometimes I, okay that's a mystery I've got to let it unfold ah, is this Roy yes his psychic visions Roy? what is that oh you know someone's gonna die next so it seems as if he's compelled to draw it. 
Okay, well that looks like a woman who's going to be bleeding at some point. Any idea what it is yet? Tricky. Very tricky. All I've been able to discern is that it starts as a silicon-based aerosol and it solidifies somehow. It is luck. Mass in A minor. Will you play it for me? I'm sure the young lady down there will be at the piano. <laughs> her name is Astrid, and this is the 100th time you have forgotten her name, so mm. no, I don't think I can get you a piano. I know the feeling. Lack of commitment, son, was always your problem. Imagine that's why you still haven't chosen a profession. I suppose I should have followed in your footsteps, because your work has obviously brought such joy to the world. Something, somehow. That's how they can solve the case. You're in some kind of trouble. Okay. You did see that. <laughs> it was nothing. He was harassing the waitress. I just told him to cut it out. Yeah, your dad wasn't born yesterday. But Walter handled that quite politely. Because I'd be like, listen, boy, I saw that. You're up to some shit. Tell me what's going on. Wow. Can you please extract this camera? I want you to note all the people on this video. Cross-check them with the victims. If they're lucky, maybe she called you and they did. Stop. Go back. Can you close your window, Wally? Oh, right! Okay, it was her bag! Yeah, yeah. I just saw that woman. That backpack wasn't there. Has anyone seen a blue backpack with the personal effects? So someone took the bag from her? And got off the bus before the attack? Well, the video footage is going to show that guy with the briefcase, right? She's a federal employee. What's her job? Oh my god, she's DEA. Mm. The woman who died on the bus, That's whose a backpack hint. was stolen, she's a drug enforcement agent, undercover. Our condolences. From her record, she seemed like an exemplary agent. Ah, she was. Can you tell us about the case she was working? called me. Said she wanted me to pull her out. She was scared. Said she heard members of the cartel discussing something about the pattern. I told her I never heard of it. And uh, <laughs> it was set for me, but she never showed. Okay, so this keeps attaching itself to every case. And do you have any idea what she could have been killing? I wish I could be more helpful. You have been agent so even the drug cartels in on this stuff? I didn't realize the world was such a good thing. You don't have to explain. I know what it's like to lose someone you've worked with closely. Don't share any more details than that. Say goodbye. Of course. Well, let's hope he's not one of those partners that was hiding secrets from her, right? John was. Should I bother to ask? The music helps to process. It works too, but as soon as Peter started playing, Walter just kind of locked in. Aww. How do you think you're the piano? He doesn't just play, he's good. You should hear him. Huh? Maybe some other time. <laughs> some other episode. The gas that was released on the bus turned solid when it met the nitrogen in the atmosphere. Instantly immobilizing and suffocating the passengers. Master John Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely times. Compounds, all of them wholly owned subsidiaries of Master Dynamic. Charlie, what's up? We got something. I think you're gonna want to see it. So what do we know about him? His name's Will McComb. He's a high school graduate, no criminal record. Apparently he's been pushing papers over at an escrow company for the last couple of months. Yeah, BPD picking him up from there right now. That doesn't seem like the profile of a mass murderer. No. I didn't think so either. Until they see his drawings, which, let me guess, he posted them on his wall? Yes. You're looking at the picture uh. of the attacks. Accidents, disasters we've seen over the last year. Okay. 
Did he Is predict the... Uh, yeah! Okay... Okay, I think this is what I'm predicting so far. Roy is going to be the instrumental, maybe team member, that will help them get a head start on all the cases. Several of those deaths have never been made public, and based on the evidence, every one of them was either drawn or constructed before the event of the day. You want someone like that on your side? You call me what way? Okay, well. Start with this drawing of yours. You've done your homework. But we supply them to a dozen labs around the world. It could have been stolen from anyone. How many domestic these labs have? Of course. Look in your room. It's a very sterile environment there. When we first met, you said that science and technology had advanced to such a state that, your words, they were running out of control. Mm-hmm. Well, so far, all the science and technology that I've come across has been very tightly controlled by NASA right now. NASA dynamic, they would have said. Well, so NASA. <laughs> Just about everything. And dynamic. Science and technology has a tie back to us. You've been investigating these cases for a very short while now. At least three of them have occurred right in your own backyard. I might suggest that you yourself Touche. That is a very obvious link I didn't really pick up on. Attacks? Apparently, Royce hasn't killed. Yes, the technology was used once before in Prague, although there were few casualties. Then I suppose if you had access to the case files, you'd know that we've already shared all the information we have. Uh, okay, well, somebody's got to get her access now, because... She can't be out of the loop. What about this one? This one gonna happen too, huh? <clears throat> Look, I know that this sounds crazy. I can be anywhere, at home or at work, and uh, just all of a sudden, I get this feeling. be longer than that but began roughly when we became aware of the pattern oh <laughs> coincidence i like to consider myself to be a fairly good poker player which requires me to have the ability to read my opponent's tells know when he's bluffing he's not bluffing a lot of things being equal the simple solution is the best what is that a man psychic theoretically is so quite that is linked psychically with someone known as likely but still possible, a small group of people responsible for these events. Equally possible someone who's merely discussing them. Perhaps he's communicating with you, Agent Grove. Oh, okay, I didn't look at it like that. I like to think I have an open mind, but I have a hard time accepting that that man is hearing another person's thoughts. So do I. I thought it was just random visions, you know? Nina Sharp just told me that this isn't the first time that material from the bus has been used. I've known her to be skeptical of anything coming from me, but in this case, she's correct. If I'm not always completely transparent with my visitors, this little task force that you and I call our day job now, it sometimes requires some, shall we say, bureaucratic maneuvering to keep it alive and free from political meddling, which means sometimes I don't tell you Okay. Now, I've been trained for a lot. There's hostage crises, terror campaigns, suicide bombers, chemical attacks, but you know the things I've seen since I started working for you? If I'm going to do this job, I need to know what it is I'm dealing with. I'm more on her side with that because they could probably speed up 
solving the case if he would let her know information like that. Something's actually happening to him. Oh! No idea. I'm extremely interested to find out. He's obviously. Get him out of there! Yeah! I think so! What did that? Whoa! Magnetic compound of some kind, or perhaps a parasite. Why would there be metal in his blood? That's not normal, right? Yeah. He's an experiment like the like the guy in episode two? Bailey and I worked on this very problem. Bailey? Yeah, as in William Bell, founder of Massive Dynamic and one of the richest men on the planet. He and Walter used to share lab gear. So is this always going to be tracked back to Walter? They wanted to use the net to send their most clandestine information. Because if no other government knew the spectrum existed, they couldn't listen in. Yes, and they called it the ghost. Okay, hence the title. That they could transmit directly from one person to another. I surmised that I could introduce an iridium based organometallic compound into the subject's brain. You have got to be kidding me. And he did. And is that. Roy McComb was one of your test subjects. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yes. That explains it, doesn't it? Explains it. Yes, that explains why he almost died today because you injected something into his brain nearly 20 years ago. No. Did you ever even bother to explain to him what you were doing? Well, it wouldn't have been a very secret experiment if I had. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> How's Roy McComb? It is true. Well, only Levine. No thanks to my father's attempts to turn him into a human walkie talkie. The iridium based compound that multiplied in his bloodstream has turned him into some kind of receiver. A receiver of what? Transmission. Somewhat jealous of this. He's perfected a ghost network and is using it to communicate. So the guy with the briefcase, maybe? Is that who he's connecting to? That's an old Abergari. As you observe this image, your brain proceeds first to duck, then rest, then duck again, and always comes back with a duck. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I do that. Well, neither do I. I just wanted to stop. I'll get the light. <laughs> I suspect. Someone has continued my research. You're suggesting that Roy's listening into someone's telephone network. Yes, but no, not listening. Roy's brain is trying to interpret the sensory input, much as our brains grapple with the duck rabbit. I told you, it always comes back with the duck. Okay. Wait, you want to rewire his brain? Not without his permission. It would be a minor surgery. Minor brain surgery? Emphasis not on the minor. <laughs> Magnetic neural stimulator I built in 1983. With a few adjustments, it would work. All right, we'll just go back in time and get it for you. No need to. He has it in the lab? Hidden in a wall in our old house in Cambridge. Oh, no. Huh. I love it. Everything just conveniently finds itself back to Walter. Okay, so I have to expect that as the pattern of... Uh, Action, right? Okay. I guess the badge is the prettiest lead in that equation. There's no lights on. I'm gonna call in and see if we can track down the owner for consent. Or just break in, which he's gonna do right now, yeah. Cause you know, that's the kind of guy he is. What are you doing? What? This is barely even a crime. I used to live here. <laughs> Not a good reason. <laughs> I hope the owners walk in on them and he tells them, Oh, I used to live here. That's why I broke into your house. Taking any medications, prescribed or illicit? Should be truthful, I will judge. In fact, since the answer is no, I may encourage some drug use. No, no. It's gotta be sort of a relief, right? Knowing there's a rational explanation. I wouldn't. Exactly, call any of this rational. How was Rufus? 
Well, the house is just like we left, but we put Rufus to sleep almost 20 years ago, Walker. Oh. That's a terrible move. We found your equipment. So sad, Walter coming kind of in and out of what's going on. This brings back some memories. Of what? This? That we're gonna see? Oh gosh. I think it's time for some intracranial penetration. This guy is so brave to let them do this to him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I believe there are custom methods in the visual centers of your brain. I'm going to attempt to move them to those regions which process sound. You'll be shown a series of images. I want to see the visual effect of this. Sounds easy enough. First image, please. It's a horse. Is he going to show him the duck? <laughs> uh, 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 what the hell is that? Because your body is normal, muscle uh, response is perfectly natural. Uh, you may also experience an involuntary bowel movement. Oh. Did you prep him with that? Or for that? With some adult diapers? Mm, oh, this is bad. Oh, this is weird. Uh, I, I, I'm... Tasting uh, dirt. Oh, no, wait, it's uh, gasoline. I'm a little scared. I don't understand. This should be working, Walter. A little bit of compassion here, too. Quando yet? What did you say? I don't know. I can hear voices. Una hora. Okay. No food, whiskey. Hour. Something's happening in an hour. How in the world can you Okay, so they've that? tapped into the frequency. My lab's admittedly a bit fuzzy. And then. An exchange is being made. Um, an exchange at South Station. I think someone's meeting at South Station to make an exchange in an hour. Wow, they're lucky they got Astrid working there. Um, it was on her from the start, maybe, or she got it on her the whole time. Oh yeah, that's a possible translation. Hmm? This woman? Oh, wow. That mofo was slicing her. Ah. Okay, well, I was I wasn't wrong about him being duplicitous as well. So what is this? Like a pa a, a pattern of duplicitous Agents in different sectors who happen to have female partners. We have to see David's work for the same people as at the bus. I'm on the far CI. In the meantime, we'll send the field assist your way. But play clothes only, we don't want to take them off. It's an interesting coincidence. Or similarity, that's what I meant to say. connecting to those specific people so that's what I hope they explain a bit more you know like why isn't it not just anybody else unless they have explained it and at this point I just don't understand so probably all of the above could I get a drink or something <laughs> right I guess you got some water he's being such a good sport we're an R so much time Is it going to be that easy to intercept? Turn around and put your hands in the air now. I guess 
guess so. You shot? When and how? Uh, oh, a silencer maybe? Yeah, he's using a silencer. No go. <laughs> Yo, if they have a way to reanimate a splattered body, that's gonna be pretty cool. What is that? Any idea what it is? Not yet. But I'm hoping our friends at the NSC will be able to tell us. We ID the shield. Matthew Ziegler. When we ran his fingerprints, he popped up on two other patent-related cases. We didn't look at his financials, travel records, linkage done. Not only can we now put a face to these people, but we know they're communicating. And how? I'd say that's an impressive day's work. Fair. What is it? Of all the models of noisy apartment, three of them are incidents that we haven't been aware of. Patent cases. It would seem so. Take a look, if you want. His character, I love the intrigue, because you don't know how much he's willingly omitting. How are you feeling? My head hurts a little, but... Um, oh, he shouldn't. Dr. Bishop gave me something for the pain. Like, that's it, that's all. <laughs> My guess is, once you arrive at the South Station with the cavalry, they realize the ghost network was compromised and stopped broadcasting on it. Well, just in case, okay. if you hear anything else... Do me a favor, give me a call. I will. I have a few release forms I need you to sign and then I can take you home. <laughs> Non-disclosure forms for sure. How about some Bach? Bach? <laughs> That's way too slow. Oh, he's gonna play now. Is that him really playing the actor? If you know that as a trivia, let me know. I'm sure you can understand why I don't want to go through channels. Mm. I know you at all, this isn't the only reason you're here. Seems a bit early to be approaching my newest hire, the goal of three case resident. Hmm. Do you feel protected by what I've done to you? I'm in the business of protecting all of my agents. I want nothing but the best for her. Of course you do. Okay. This is so creepy. So Olivia is popular. We found a number. Let's see what we have. Crystalline structures intact. No detectable oscillations. And this may just be what we need to break the encryption. Speaking of which, I'm told you've made progress. See for yourself? Let me know when it's finished. Who's in the bubble? I... Oh, John? Oh, okay. Data transfer. transferring what's his knowledge to computer system Ooh. okay 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 I'm gonna kind of browse through the scenes and pick one that really stands out to me and share additional thoughts for starters this episode has now changed my perspective on how to approach this afterthoughts portion of the video. <laughs> okay, so first thing, I am so thankful this is a very, very entertaining show. I mean, Walter as a character, Peter as a character, all of them as characters are so engaging and the sense of humor 
my goodness, there's some really funny moments. And there's some that has kind of passed me by. It's like, I'll get it, but I don't have time to laugh till the next thing that actually just pops up. And I have to refrain myself from pausing and playing and pausing and playing and rewinding because my club members don't want to watch me for two and a half hours trying to figure stuff out scene by scene. And here on YouTube, I have to condense my reaction for the sake of it being a proper reaction video, right? So anyways, what I'm getting at is beforehand, I was picking my, you know, standout scene of the episode based on, you know, either performance or humor or a shocking reveal, shocking surprise. But now after watching this episode, I realize I think I'm going to have to take a different approach because it's almost too easy. It's almost too much of a given that almost every scene is so like, woo, ah, woo, you know, for me. So shock value as a factor, I got to throw it out the window. Instead, what I'm going to do now is pick a scene that stands out to me as revelatory to the overall narrative or the overall mystery, right? So what I mean by that is, okay, for instance, the first scene that stands out that kind of shook me a little bit in terms of how relieved I am that I discovered this show, Fringe, because it's the perfect balance to the show Supernatural that I'm watching. And I never would have predicted that. They're two completely different shows, but yet Fringe is giving me a contrasting perspective pretty much related to the same thing. So what do I mean by that, okay? Let's use the main scene now that I'm going to bring up. And that is when... Walter is describing what's happened to Roy, to Olivia and Peter and um, the assistant there, Astrid. He's giving a rational, scientific explanation to what I'm so accustomed to in the fantasy world of things as being somewhat of a supernatural thing. In that show, someone who sees things ahead of time, they have visions, the causation behind that is of a fantastic nature, right? Beyond human understanding. And in contrast, in this episode, here's someone that has visions, but the explanation as to the cause is explained with current science or current fringe science or fringe science of 2008 at that time, because I'm sure it's evolved since then. And yeah, and that's just cool. So in a nutshell, I'm getting at is that when I pick a scene from this show, it's going to be related to what got me thinking on a different level than normal. And of course, if there's a shocking moment that just, you know, is the staple of that episode, I will acknowledge that as well. Now, when it comes to the character of Roy, though, mind you, I don't fully understand exactly what Walter was saying. I mean, essentially, I'd say he's somewhat of a human radio because they do talk about him being a receiver, picking up on transmission, you know, dialing into the right frequency kind of thing. And so that's how I'm looking at Roy as a human radio, so to speak. And therefore, what I'm just kind of confused about, how is it that Roy was only picking up on specific people's frequency? Like, why was it that guy on the phone, that, that agent, or the guy at the beginning of the episode, the one who um, turned the bus into jelly or whatever, why was it only those people that he was able to pick up on? Because if he has that ability, wouldn't he be picking up on all kinds of stuff all over the world unrelated? So perhaps I missed that in the episode if that was already actually explained and I just completely didn't understand it. Therefore, I leave it up to you to correct me on that. But that's right now at the moment my confusion. So when it comes to my Ash emoji rating for episode three, hmm, I will give it four Ash emojis. It was great. It's definitely going to be rewatched. It's on my list. I can't promise you when, but it's on my list. Maybe towards the end of the season, I'll do a full rewatch before I watch the season finale. That's likely what I'll probably do. And uh, yeah, that's my rating on this episode. I hope you've enjoyed this reaction. I look forward to your comments and even more so your clarifications on the fringe science aspect that was described in this episode. And if you want to watch my full reaction to this episode, uncut, unfiltered, details about how to access that is in the description box below. So until my reaction to episode four, I'm tuning out, peacing out. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.